So we're going to just look at one more thing. So this is something that we call the ambiguous case. Hassan, you re you're listening? So I've said here, suppose that you are told that AB is equal to 4. AC is equal to 3. And the angle ABC is 44 degrees. What are the possible values of angle ACB? So when you look at this particular drawing that we've got here, I need to think about where I'm going to place C. I'll just grab my line here for a second and I'm going to put that in a different colour. So C has got to lie somewhere along this bottom bit because we've been told that the angle ABC is 44 degrees. We've been told that this line here has got a length of 4 and we want to make the length of this line 3. Okay? Let's pretend that this is 3. This blue line that I've got here is 3. That's one of the places that it could go, but there is another place that this could go that would still make the blue line 3, it would still make the line AB 4, and it would still have the angle of 44. So it's like that, but just switched over onto this side that we've got here. Okay, so you've got these two places where this line could end up, where the length of the line is the same, all of the other things are the same. However, one of the scenarios looks like this, where this is the angle that we were talking about here. Let's just call it alpha. The other scenario that we've got is like this. So again, you can see that these blue lines are the same length as each other. But then we've got this side of the size of the angle here, which is beta. Clearly, alpha is not the same as beta. So although we've been given the same information, there are two different triangles. One of the triangles looks like this. So I have 44, 4, and uh, alpha, like this. And my other triangle I've got looks like this, where I've got 4, 44, and I've got beta. And we knew that this side was 3. So do you see how these two triangles have actually got the exact same setup? If I was to do the sine rule for both of these things, I would have for this one, sine alpha over 4 equals sine 44 over 3. Those pair and those pair that I've got there. Does that make sense for this one? Then for this second triangle that I've got, if I was to write that out, I would say it would be sine beta over 4 equals sine 44 over 3. So I've come up with exactly the same thing, and yet we know that alpha and beta are different to each other. From drawing that diagram, we can... Like, not certain. If you're ambiguous, if something is ambiguous, you're not sure whether it's one thing or the other. So this is where we have a particular case where we're not sure. Is it going to be an acute angle or is it going to be an obtuse angle? So we need to look at a bit more information to do that. But before we look at that information, we need to find out when we actually come down to this stage here that sine alpha is 4 sine 44 over 3 and sine beta is the same thing, which is 4 sine 44 over 3, we need to make sure that we can come up with two different answers for alpha and beta. And I'm going to show you what those two answers are in just a second. Everyone got that written down that they want written down? Because there's some more information on the next slide that's pretty similar, actually. So here is um, kind of what we were just talking about on that previous page. We drew in these two extra lines, and we had these two different angles that we had here. We called them alpha and beta, and here I've just called them C. So I've said um, C is somewhere on the horizontal line, and there's two ways which the length of the line could be 3. Using the sine rule, you come up with that C is equal to the inverse sine of this. Let's actually kind of come up with this last bit here. So here we would have said that alpha was the inverse sine of this thing, and 4 sine 44 over 3 is indeed 0 0.9262, okay? 
your calculator will give the acute angle of 67.9 degrees. So it's actually going to tell us this one over here. The calculator gives you the acute angle. But if we look at a graph of sine, we can see that there's actually a second value for this, which corresponds to this value that you have over here. So I'm just going to talk about this graph that we've got here for a second to show you the two places where it can happen. The sine graph starts here and it goes down, sorry, up and then down and then up and then down. I'm sure you're familiar with that from GCSE. And the value that we're interested in it being equal to is 0.9262, which runs along the top here. Clearly, it's crossing the sine graph in two different places. The calculator gives you the first one, which is 67.9. And then the second one is actually 112.1. What do you think? How do you think we calculated 112.1, given that we know that this is 67.9 here? It's 180 take away that because what can you tell me about this shape that we have here? What property does this shape have? It's symmetrical. So if this distance is 67.9, this distance here is also going to be 67.9. So we can do 180 minus 67.9, which is 112.1 degrees. So there are those two answers that we've got there. Those are two of them. So the sine rule produces two possible solutions for a missing angle. One of them is sine theta, and the other one is the sine of 180 minus theta. Whether we use the acute or obtuse angle depends on the context of the question. So once you get your answer for theta, that will be acute. If you want the obtuse one, you do 180 minus theta, and that one gives you the obtuse. This idea that I'm talking about here is fundamental to what we'll be doing in the future about trig equations. So if there's something about this you're not sure about now, it's probably good just to mention it because we're going to be working on that in the next few lessons on, on trig equations too. So there's two options. Your calculator will give you this. If you want the obtuse one, you do 180 minus it. So I'm going to have a look at this question together that's on the next page now. Given that the angle theta is obtuse, determine theta and hence determine the length of x. So we've got a double whammy kind of question that's going on here, okay? We first of all want to find out what theta is, then we want to find out what x is. So to find theta, what kind of rule does it look like we'll use to find theta, the cosine or the sine rule? The sine rule, because I've got a pair here and I've also got a pair here. So I'm going to start off with sine theta over 10 equals sine 20 over 5. So sine theta is equal to 10 sine 20 over 5, which is just the same as 2 sine 20, because I can do the 10 divided by 5. So theta is equal to the inverse sine of this number, 2 sine 20. Well, 2 sine 20 to keep it in my calculator anyway, it's 0 0.684, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to do the inverse of 0 0.684. And I will get that theta is 43.16 degrees. But I also know that one of my other solutions will be 180 minus theta, which is the one that I'm actually looking for. So if I do 180 minus 43.16, I get the actual obtuse angle which is 136.84 degrees. So our angle, our theta is obtuse. So our theta is 136.8 degrees. So you just have to look at it. If it's an obtuse angle, you do 180 minus. If it's acute, just leave it the way it is. That's part one of the question. What can we do for part two of the question? If I want to find out x. Cosine. You can do the cosine rule. That is an option because we have a side, we have a side. But I want this angle up here. What angle would that be up there? Uh, 180 take away 20. Take away 136.8. You'd get that angle that's at the top. And then you can do the cosine rule. What's the other method I could do? 
yeah, I could now do the sine rule, because if I want to find out what x is, oh, I still need to find out that anyway, don't I? So I'm still going to have to do that. So let's find out this angle that goes at the top. This angle that goes at the top is 180 minus, let's not call it theta, let's call it 136.84, and let's minus 20. So 180 minus that, minus 20. This angle at the top is 23.16 degrees, OK? Do you prefer to do the sine rule or the cosine rule? The cosine rule. I think the sine rule will probably be easier, but I think it's shorter. So I'm going to be looking at now a couple of different pairs. My pair is going to be x going with the 23.6. And probably the easier pair to use is the 5 with the 20, just because they look like easier ones to use as those pairs. So I'm looking for a side. So I'm going to do x over sine of 23.16 equals 5 over the sine of 20. So x is equal to 5 sine 23.16 divided by the sine of 20. And that gives me that x is 5.75 to two decimal places here. So we've done uh, me talking an awful lot today. I think what we'll do is we'll just pick a couple of questions from exercise 9C, which will have some ambiguous cases in. Um, and then we will do a quick bit on the area, hopefully before the end of the lesson. So from exercise 9C, let's try... From exercise 90, let's just start off by doing question three and four. Three, four, and five, OK? On the boards, yeah? Because we've been pretty lazy. Let's get up and about. Sorry, you haven't been lazy. I've not been lazy either, actually. 